If it's a stunning statement about the power of his words that William Shakespeare is still considered the greatest writer in the English language more than 400 years after he died, imagine what it says about the power of their words that the two poets considered to be the greatest in the Chinese language died more than 1,200 years ago. It is Li Bo, who lived from 701 to 762 CE, and Du Fu, who lived from 712 to 770 CE, who are widely acknowledged as the two greatest poets in the Chinese language. It makes sense that they both lived during the Tang Dynasty, when the ability to write poetry was so prized by Chinese society that it was one of the skills tested on the civil service examination that qualified those who passed for prestigious positions in the government. Because of that, those who aspired to become members of the educated elite sought out training in the demanding form of regulated poetry popular at the time, which required syllables to alternate tones and patterns. Regulated poetry emphasized the creation of beautiful couplets, that is, two-line units, that include not only that grammatical parallelism, but also thematic parallelism. For an excellent explanation of regulated poetry, Please see the line-by-line -line analysis of Du Fu's poem, Spring Prospect, in its original language on pages 1,305 to 1,307 of our textbook, The Norton Anthology of World Literature. Those technical demands of what was then referred to as recent style poetry, as well as its inclusion on the civil service examination, gave poetry unprecedented status in Chinese society during the Tang Dynasty. So it's ironic that neither Li Bo nor Du Fu passed the civil service examination. Li Bo never attempted to take the civil service examination, and Du Fu failed it, twice. It is a testament to Li Bo's exceptional poetic talent that he was instead awarded a position at the Hanlin Academy, which had been established by the emperor to support unconventional literary talents. And unconventional is definitely an appropriate term to describe Li Bo, who challenged social conventions in both his poetry and his life. His eccentric personality and his excessive drinking cost him his position at the academy. But it was his unique way of looking at the world that inspired his contemporaries to call him the banished immortal. That is, they imagined him as a sort of god who had been sentenced to a lifetime among humans. Li Bo actively cultivated this reputation for otherworldliness, and legends such as the one that he drowned while trying to embrace the moon's reflection on the water uh, have reinforced it. In terms of his poetry, Libo also challenged the dominance of recent-style regulated poetry by employing old-style folk forms to, most often, offer his readers opportunities to escape from reality. Du Fu, in contrast, was a master of recent-style regulated poetry that captured reality as he experienced it. While we do not have a record of which section of the civil service examination that Du Fu failed, it seems safe to assume it was not the section on regulated poetry. However, whatever section he did fail limited Du Fu to only minor roles in the government. This satisfied, he ultimately left the government and spent much of his later life traveling. Although his poetry was not as popular as Li Bo's during their overlapping lifetimes, readers during the later Song Dynasty came to revere Du Fu as an exceptional poet historian who chronicled the effects of the An Lusan Rebe Rebellion against the Emperor Xiang Zong on his life and on the lives of those around him. Personally, I found reading the poetry of Li Bo and Du Fu to be a fascinating study in contrast. Although they lived during the same time and have since achieved equal levels of critical acclaim, their approaches to poetry and beliefs about its primary purpose are dramatically different. There's no doubt though, that both of these artists deserve the status of master and their respective art the status of masterpieces of world literature.